Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna fangirl here because I'm a huge wrestling nerd. So I'm just you guys have you know Tyler, you were really excited about Chad Nuga, you know, bringing in the coach here. I'm gonna fangirl, lead announcer of Monday Night Raw, and now part of the Apple broadcast team, Kevin Patrick Egan. Hey, hey, hey. hey. what's up, fellas? How are we? How was it going? How are you? Good, oh, great, good. Tommy, Tyler, Sydney. Thanks for having me on. No need to fan girl, fan guy, Tommy. Come on. How are you? <laughs> he makes it sound like we're not as excited, though. Like, yeah. so, I've got two levels. You guys aren't wrestling nerds like I am, so I've got two <laughs> levels of them. I I will give a quick disclaimer, Kevin. I'm not a as big a wrestling fan as Tyler and Tommy. Oh, but hopefully that's fine. I'm a big soccer fan, as you know. So hopefully yeah, of course. I uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late. I was actually I have an excuse. I was on the phone with we were on the line with Carlos Gruezo. Ahead of the match, so uh, just catching up with some San Jose players and Luchi Gonzalez um, before the game. So apologies, I'm a few minutes late. Hey, not at no, no worries. No worries. No worries. That's hey, that's what we're here to talk about. You got you Let's got a new it. gig. Yeah, really excited. What an honor! Like to be able to continue to tell the story of the league. It's uh, you know I was part of broadcast in 2012. I remember like my very first broadcast in Major League Soccer was the um, Chicago Fire game away at Montreal, Montreal's first game in the league in 2012. And we broadcasted that match from the NASCAR studios in Charlotte. Think about that. Like the match was in the Olympic Stadium in Montreal and we did it from the NASCAR studios in Charlotte because of budget reasons. And I think the league is, has come on and grown so much since then. And to be part of this now, this, this revolutionary deal for 10 years, Apple will be calling the games. And I think it, there's going to be teething problems. There's going to be little setbacks here and there but everybody knows that you you know at least we all do on the inside we, we know we have to just keep going and make sure that this becomes a success which i have no doubt it will well at least you have a future with apple i was going to say because bally's has been in the news quite a bit recently yeah yeah i mean it, it look it, it switches gears for us all i want to do is look forward and and already i'm really excited to work with kinder d st Aubin. Uh, our producer is amazing for this for this first game um and yeah, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 55 plus thousand from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Let's let's see what, what sort of crowd it actually is. And a game that I think if we're doing an over-under on goals, I don't care what you throw at me, I'm picking the over. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. We're right there with you. It's, it's going to be nil all now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Of course. <laughs> so how did, going back to the, the original, I guess, conversation, how did the Apple deal, how did this whole thing come up to you was how was it brought up to you because we saw on that original list of announcers that came out we got a little worried we're like no no where, i mean I for, for, for a lot of us quite honestly that was simply people that were signed and ready to go at that point and i hadn't signed so gotcha. that's that's just being honest um like anything you, you want to make sure you, you're, you're good with reading through the entire contract if you want to change one or two things that that can take a little bit of time so um they wanted to go ahead with a launch day and there was 18 broadcasters you know, that were announced before the launch day. And I, th I believe something like 62 since then. So I honestly mm -hmm. didn't care. I, I like, it would have been cool to be out in California for the launch, but at the same token, I just, I'm just so happy to be a part of it. I yeah. Don't and I don't, I don't think a lot of Atlanta United fans were too worried that you would be a part of the MLS season pass considering your work with the club. But uh, we signed off for the last time last season with you, Jill and Mo. Did you kind of think that that would be your last time calling matches for Atlanta United? Was that no, no, I, I, I didn't. But then again, maybe that's been a little bit cocky or, or, or have a little bit of self-belief or whatever else. I just, I, I, I love the league and I, 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 I just, I want to see it grow and I want to be part of that growth if I can. Like I see my kids, you know, kicking a ball all the time. And, and I've said this many times before and I'll say it again. I'd pick being part of Major League Soccer over any other league around the world as a broadcaster because I truly believe in the, in the trajectory of Major League Soccer and where it's going. But also, more important than that, for me, I want to go to games with my kids and with my family as a fan of the game on off days and enjoy it. And I just, I, I, I crave that. So I, I'm, I'm in love with the league, happy to be telling its stories. And um, I'm, I'm just so happy that it's, it's a coincidence that the first game for me, a lot, a lot of the broadcasters I've been speaking with them haven't gotten their old teams at all in their first, uh, first batch of games that they've been given. And it just so happens that I'm at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So uh, roll on Saturday. Feels like destiny, right? Like maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody wanted. Yeah, everybody wants the original crew, right? Like you know, you three, of course, Mo and and Jillian, they're doing their thing, which is great. 
You know, they've, they've got their own set of responsibilities now, but I think everybody was kind of having their fingers crossed. Like, are we going to get Kevin back for this first one? Um, so no, just super I, I don't think so, but thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I tell you, the fan base was, was excited when, uh, when that was announced that you were going to be there. So super excited about it. Um, are there specific crews like with, with you and Kendra and then the other, I guess, pairings, are y'all tied to a certain like geographical region or is it, is it just kind of up in the air where you guys end up at? So far, I can't give anything away in terms of where we're going, but I, I have, um, no Western conference games so far. I don't think. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, it may, it, it may not make sense to send somebody from Miami to Vancouver to cover right. a game financial sense. I mean, it makes no sense actually in any way when you've got so many broadcasters. So they may work it that way. They may not like they, they may want a certain team covering a game in Seattle. That's they may have tier their teams, you know, um, for all I know. So I look, I don't care. I, I've, I've said this to so many of the broadcasters when we've been, we've all been chatting, by the way, it's been hilarious. Like we've all become <laughs> friends over the years, the majority of us. So there's probably, you know, six or seven different broadcasters that I was in touch with closely throughout the process some of them didn't make it in which was devastating and and you know people that love 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 the league and some folks have been part of the league for a long time and just bleed major league soccer and are devastated to 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 not be a part of it going forward so i i like i said before when i when i say i'm grateful i genuinely mean it so much because there are other others that are you know tremendous human beings and excellent broadcasters that aren't part of it going forward for now at least that is yeah, and you kind of mentioned, you know, just your excitement for MLS season pads, being able to cover the league for Apple. Um, and you kind of touched on the fact that, you know, a little bit on the fact that broadcasters will be covering the matches on site as opposed to what you're doing, like you were just talking about over a decade ago. But, yeah. I mean, other than, yeah, other than the examples you mentioned, what really excites you about MLS season pads and how Apple is going to cover MLS? First and foremost, for me, my life is about to be nuts for this for this year with <laughs> with uh, with travel. You know, leave on a Friday, get back on a Tuesday with little kids. Tyler, I was talking to you a little bit about that yeah. in, in the emails going back and forth before this. Um, and it's it's the fact that I can watch any game from anywhere. And I know everybody's pumping that you know through our, our whether it's social media or or across, like even when I order an Uber these days, there's MLS season pass advertising comes up on Uber, which is so cool. But my parents can watch it back in Ireland. Like that for me is legendary. Like the fact that my dad can open up MLS season pass on his phone if we're broadcasting a game from Atlanta on Saturday night. It, they stay up so late in Ireland anyway that for them to watch a game <laughs> kicking off at 1230 is fine. Uh, that works also for preparation for me, like thinking about getting on a plane and logging on to MLS season pass and watching a match from the previous week while I'm on the plane. I'm reading a book called Essentialism right now. And it's about how to get more done by doing less and, and working, you know, in the most sensible way that you possibly can. So MLS season pass is going to help me an awful lot in that sense. I need to read that book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, need it's good. That book. I need to live that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Tell me about it. <laughs> no, um, but you talked about, you talked about like the global scope of it. I mean, yeah. over a hundred countries, you mentioned Ireland, you know, the UK as a whole, Wales, um, Europe. I mean, Especially everywhere you go, you'll be able, like you said, to watch it. And I think really leading up to 2026, this is really, to me, a watershed moment for MLS because yeah. it really exposes the league on a global scale um, that it hasn't really been exposed to. Well, it hasn't been really exposed in the past. So mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the things that you know I'm excited about. I'm sure a lot of other people are excited about, too. Yeah. And honestly, Sydney, it's not just the fact that, it, yes, that is the case. Everybody can watch it, whether you're in Australia or whether you're, you're, you're somewhere, you know, in the North Pole, Santa Claus can whip out a phone and watch it as well. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that it's Apple too. Like, what do Apple do and fall short on? Like, not much. Yeah. You know, they, they, they really put the resources in and the brains that they have at HQ to make sure that this is a success. So what, what I'm seeing through all our meetings that we're having and training and, and, and whatnot, the studios are looking so cool up in New York. Um, the, 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 the facilities, the the training we're getting, the conversations we're all having at such a rapid speed. Like it's a race to the start line right now for everybody. And it's, it like I said, we will have teething problems. That's a given, but that's okay once you know that in advance. And we all know that and we're all going in with the right attitude, I think. So hopefully for everybody watching, you won't be, 
you know, disrupted by that and you have a great watch, you know, viewing experience. You know, I had someone uh, reach out to me yesterday because T-Mobile offered the MLS pass yeah. for free. And he said, I've never watched MLS, but now that I have this, I'm going to check it out. And people love free stuff. So, I mean, I think that's great for the for this for the first year, too. And I don't know, maybe it'll happen every single year. Uh, Apple or I'm sorry, uh, the MLB pass is always on T-Mobile every single year. So I think that's another great way to expand the league is, you know, giving it away for free for at least the first season. Yeah, true, true. Uh, and my wife is always saying, do we need TV? Because I, I don't really I don't really watch too much you know, TV anymore. A lot of people are cutting the cord. And if you were hanging on for Major League Soccer, well, now obviously you can you can do what you want and cut the cord and just rely on MLS season pass. Yeah, that was a that was a point of contention that uh, it, it was it <laughs> was a big too. conversation last year. I'm not ready to cut it yet. No way. <laughs> um, so just to pivot away a little bit from the Apple thing, but specifically Atlanta, because you've been calling them for so long now. Uh, what? What are your thoughts right now on and as the team as a whole in terms of changes that have been made and moving forward, guys that are coming in? What What do you think? What I mean, as a, as a fan, yeah, what, what do you think? Probably cautious optimism in a way. We were, you know, when you think about the entire fan base, probably just a little bit scarred after last season. I, I, you talk to so many people that, that around the league that will say that's the worst injury crisis I've ever seen in a team. And you start to forget about some of the injuries that were two, three months long, like like an Emerson Heinemann, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, Aruju missed some time. Uh, Joseph was was in and out uh, throughout the year, really. And then the big ones, obviously, Brad, Dylan Castanera behind him. Bobby Shuttleworth retires. I mean, the team used five goalkeepers. Am I missing anyone? Was there six? Like five goalkeepers. What a, what a, what a tough time for goalkeeping coach Liam Curran and, and all the coaches for that matter. Um so, uh, Miles, you know, huge one. Ozzy Alonso, ACL, like the list goes on. It's crazy. Uh, Santiago Sosa missed significant time. So to 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 have a clean bill of health or, or close to it as of right now, to bring a, get a Miles in from the beginning, um, to get Brad, your captain back, who's such an emotional leader. Gutman missed a boatload of time last year as well. Let's not forget. I I, I think things will be an awful lot better. The concern is. It's just, I want to see it work, you know? I, wa- I, I really want to see, like, who's going to be in the midfield? We know there'll be some adjustments for, for match day one. And uh, and then further forward, you know, the, maybe the two players I'd love to see the biggest jump from would be the two Brazilians, Luis Araujo and um, Mateus Rossetto. You know, I think they've, they've got so much talent, so much ability. And now I think hopefully they should be ready to take their game to the next level. I think Araujo, we mentioned it on the show last week, Araujo has been the one that, to me, and it's and it's kind of strange for an attacking player, but to me, he's been the most consistent player in the preseason. Again, the preseason games, yeah. I get that. But Pineda, he mentioned a few days ago that he after the AmFam Cup, actually, that he wanted Arujo to be as he was in 2021 when he first got here. And we know how exciting he was. Yeah. And to me, seeing him in Chattanooga and the little bits and pieces that we've seen from the other matches, and then of course the AmFam Cup, he he seems like he's taken whatever conversation, whatever break that he needed. And he's run with it literally, yeah. and uh, yeah. and yeah. But I agree with you. I think he, I think everybody could agree that he needs to be the one, especially as a DP, that steps up. Mm-hmm. And the line. league, the league doesn't feel that way. Like if you talk to people, for, like fans of other teams around the country and Canada, they don't see him in that like elite bracket yet. But Atlanta United fans know it, and they can yeah. see it. Like that goal against Cincinnati after five minutes when he first burst onto the scene was staggering. Like if any if any player did that, like if Kylian Mbappe did that. And we're, t- we're talking about it all the time. Um, you know, he had no right to take on five, six players the way he did and, and, and yeah. finish in the way that he did. It was a beautiful goal. It's just, can he do it now consistently? And his numbers, we all look at, they've been dragged through the mud. We all know his numbers last year in terms of like conversion rate, like pop shots from distance. If he can be a little cuter, a little smarter with his decision-making, a little savvier, well, then I, I think Luis Araujo could have, a, could have an outstanding season. And it also helps on the far side that you're going to have natural width with a Derek Etienne Jr. or Caleb Wiley that like to stay wide. That's going to help Thiago Almada an awful lot as well. So obviously the big story is, of course, Joseph Martinez going to enter Miami and Jorgis Jokamak is coming in from Beautiful Celtic. Beautiful pronunciation, Sydney. On, say, it, <laughs> say it again, Sydney. Say it again. Jorgos Yakumakis. Well done. <laughs> Love it. Hey, we've, we've gone through it on this show. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man, we went back and forth. Definitely. What should, what should the goal call be if Yakumakis scores? What should it be? 
Oh my god! I don't know. <laughs> right? You're not over it yet, Tommy, are you? <laughs> if we bring up Joseph, we have to light the candle. This is every. This enough. is every episode. That's fair enough. Yeah. Oh, is it, is it Yaka? Like oh, there you go. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. <laughs> nice. Cheers. <laughs> nice. But um, I'll have to get back to you, Kevin, on that goal call. But um, no, um, that that's of course it, it's going to be the big storyline, right? Surrounding Atlanta United, how Yakamak is integrates himself into the league, not just Atlanta, Atlanta United, but into the league as well. He has yeah. some success with Celtic, of course. He has some success in the Netherlands. Uh, th- again, that's going to be the big story. And... Is it the big story, though? Is it? Well, like for you, one of for them. you. You want it? It's, it's one of them, but I don't get that sensation right now. That feeling mm. that they, that if Yakamakis doesn't score three goals in his first five games, that we're all gonna like. I, and I, I, the reason I say that is, I think he's gonna be a. a I'm sorry if I cut you off, Sydney. Apologies. No. Um, it, I, I think he's gonna bring his teammates into play. I think he's. I think he's a better suited player potentially for this system with the players around him than Joseph was. And and I have to be careful in, when I say that. I, I take into context where Joseph was when he left and the last few seasons, and he hasn't been the player that he was in 17, 18, and 19. I, I think he'd say that himself, you know, Joseph will always be the king of the South in Atlanta United's fans' eyes. And, and I, for one, I'll say this now, I'm incredibly grateful that I, as a broadcaster, was along for the journey and was able to call so many of his brilliant goals. Like when I see him again, I want to go up and give him the biggest hug and kiss in the cheek and thank him <laughs> for the memories, you know? But I think it's yeah. one of those ones that, I just my honest opinion. I feel it's a good move for for all parties. Um, for Joseph, I hope he goes down and I hope he starts banging in the goals for Miami. I really do. I wish him the best because he's a top class fella. And for Atlanta, I hope Atlanta are a better side without Joseph now because we've we've moved on. The team has moved on. Um, and if Atlanta United is relying on Joseph Martinez not scoring goals to make the playoffs, well then that says something about Atlanta United rather than Joseph, right? So like the the club is big enough and bold enough to to be able to move on and make the playoffs without worrying about what, what the striker down in Miami is doing. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. Definitely an interesting point. Um, yeah, it, but yeah, going back to Yakimakis real quick, um, I'm sure you've seen your share of uh, the Premiership, and Mark, who watches the show all the time, has a good call, Yorgos Yakalazo, I think pronouncing <laughs> it that right. <laughs> Barcalazo again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I'm sure you've seen your match of Scott, or your share of Scottish Premiership matches. Um, if so, what, what are your impressions of Yakimakis, what you saw from him, or what you've seen from him thus far overseas? Well, first of all, aside from the actual play, he screams passion. Mm-hmm. I've talked to a few friends over there, and they're like, he is so lovable. And that's that's the aspect that I think Atlanta United fans will, will latch on instantly, is his passion for the game. Now you throw in an Andrew Gutman, who I've said before, I think could, could captain Atlanta United for the next 10 years, um, you know, or close to that. Uh, then you, you, you get uh, Brad back. You get Ozzy Alonso potentially back. And all of a sudden, you're looking around this team going, there is characters. And for so long, with, with so many injuries, Atlanta and I were a very quiet team, a very timid team with, without leaders. And that's one of those intangibles that you, have to, you absolutely need. You can't quite point at it and see it, but the players can feel it. The fans can feel it. And Yakimakis will bring that straight away. He's already brought personality in his yeah. press conferences that we've all yeah. enjoyed. And then as a player, he's he's going to give you that dart across the six. And I don't want to keep going back and forth comparing um but I think that I think that Brooks Lennon is going to be the player. Like we can talk about it now and we can revisit this in 9 months. And Brooks Lennon will be the player that will benefit most from Yorgos Yakimakis in the side. Hmm. I totally agree. That the height I, and it kind of goes back to some things that we talked about last year a lot that points that came up with the, the style that Pineda wants to play, there's there just weren't really any big bodied guys in the box to to kind of cause chaos. Joseph was in a system that wasn't suited, I think, to his strength that he had, you know, back in the day. And, and that's fine. Teams have to evolve. But uh no, I mean, I, I totally agree. I think Brooks Lennon is a good shout. Um, and he was one of the ones that as you mentioned earlier, he was one of the ones that was injured, kind of a freak accident, right? Like in Montreal or Toronto or wherever it was, like he just slipped yeah. on a in, part in of the, war- the, you're right toronto before the warm-up or in the yeah, warm-ups yeah, yeah yeah it's just wild like it was just an unlucky year so write that one down as i mean this is it's hard to believe i i need to do this before saturday just write down every single player that missed say over two weeks um with injuries and it's a long list of 13 14 guys uh, for Atlanta united so i wish gonzalo pineda the best because gonzalo pineda is 
he's got such a wonderful mind for the game. The coaching staff are tremendous. The vibes, the culture in the group is outstanding. Like there's so many things moving in the right direction for Atlanta United. And now you got to execute. You got to make it happen on the pitch. You're going to run out of ink with writing all those names down. I know. Seriously, Tommy. <laughs> right. Well, Kevin, right. I, I'm, I'm the wrestling nerd here. So I have to tell you a quick story. Go for it. Didn't know you were going on to Monday Night Raw. I'm cooking food in the other room, and I hear your voice. Wait, what were you cooking? I'm starving over here. What were you cooking? Oh. You got to tell the story, ago, Tom. Probably a steak around March. <laughs> okay. But I, I hear you, and I run in, and I see you on, on Raw, and I start screaming to my wife because I'm just excited. I need to talk to somebody uh, about this. She runs down, and she starts screaming that you're on there, and it, it was it was a fun moment, and it was shocking. So my question is, how did you get involved with the WWE? Yeah. I mean, I was, I, I've said this before. I was, I was shaving. I was getting ready to go on CNN and I got a call and um, there were some headhunters uh, looking at broadcasters and there were many auditions going on. And, and I, I got asked, would I like to go for an audition to be a broadcaster? And I jumped at it. Um, I, it was during you know, COVID. It was early 2021, like January. So I drove to Tampa and blown away by the experience couldn't wait to get a phone call to say i got the job but that's all i was thinking about was like you're gonna get it you're gonna get it focus on it. you focus on the positives here and uh the call came through from my boss and yeah it was uh it was a, it was a it was a cool chat to say would you like to be a backstage reporter and then i'm very grateful that it led to hosting the kickoff panels with kayla braxton and 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 now you know, unfortunately for Jimmy Smith, you know, he was moved on and I was told, right, you're in the hot seat. I love Jimmy. Jimmy's still a, a great friend. And, but I was told, right, you're up, you're, you're next in line. So like, okay, let's go for it. Did you watch wrestling before you did I the mean, interview? It, no, it was hard before I worked with WWE. I was never an avid fan like you, but I, like, it was hard not to know what was going on in the attitude era throughout school and growing up, but I did have to do an awful lot of studying and I continue um, to, to watch everything I can to, to more, more so for me, it's talking to everybody when I'm in there or just being a sponge around some of the greatest minds to ever do it, like the likes of an edge um, that I can I can lean on. Like I'm, I'm working with Corey Graves every Monday now, and I, I can't tell you how much he's helped me. He's He's been so helpful um, with knowledge of the industry. And, and then I think he sees my growth in terms of knowledge of the business and the industry as we chat and we'll go for a beer after the show or um, uh, go for a coffee the morning of the show. We'll just talk. We'll talk psychology. We'll talk about characters, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. I've I've been eternally grateful for the opportunity to do this right now, and and to hopefully continue to do it for quite some time. Well, for someone new to the business, you're you're doing a hell of a job. <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning a million things every week, so I appreciate that. <laughs> are we so going to see a, a um, are we going to see a storyline with Kevin Patrick in the ring at some point? Do you think? Or I'm keeping the head down, Sydney. You know? <laughs> Keep the head down. I've been threatened on that desk already a few times. So I'll just. <laughs> I've seen people get thrown at you, at, you know, while you're behind the desk. So I'm oh, always yeah. interested to, to hear your reaction. It's it's a very challenging role. It's a, it's incredibly challenging because you're, mm. you, you could have someone thrown across and your desk is like my first day on the job. Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar went through my desk after two. I say my desk, Corey and I's desk, the announced desk after two minutes. And I'm watching Bobby Lashley pummel Lesnar and I'm watching all my notes get shredded to pieces <laughs> two minutes into my first day on the Raw, the, the Raw premiere on October 10th. And I, I, I wanted to just go, ah, fur. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, you got to, you got to stay professional and keep what on. What have I walked into? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, it's been, it's been so enjoyable though. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm all in, I'm all in mentally, physically, everything. So it's, it's going to be a wild ride this year, but just feel very lucky. Well, there's a lot of wrestlers that come from Atlanta. Yeah. Are any of them Atlanta United fans? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been on to I've been on to AJ Styles about hammering the Golden Spike, and uh, mm -hmm. AJ would definitely be up for that. I need to speak with with someone at the club, like Xavier Woods from the New Day would love to come out and hammer the Golden Spike and go to a game. So uh, Cody Rhodes doesn't live too far away; he's here in Atlanta too. So yeah, we got we got to. We got to get some guys out. I know Corey Graves asked me for an Atlanta United jersey today, so I might see if the club can get him one with Graves on the back. Mm, um, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah have yeah, him come so. in and, and nail the spike. That'd be that'd be sweet. Yeah, he said though he, he's like 
well, I want to do it with you. We're podcast partners with After the Bell. So we'd go do it together. And I was like, I don't, they don't want me to do the spike. They want you to do the spike. <laughs> I'll just walk alongside and I'll show you where to go. <laughs> Stand there, cheer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been tweeting you since since you got on the show about getting a wrestler onto the spike. So I'm glad that no, I'm maybe just... I subconsciously got to you there. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I deleted Twitter off my phone and I'm I'm not really using Twitter like like I used to. And it goes back to that whole essentialism thing. I just I find like I'm, I'm better off. I, mm. My my time is is spent elsewhere rather than because I'll I'll end up scrolling. You know, we all know what that's like on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Well, I know, and I, I think Alexa Bliss is an Orlando City fan. I've seen her with some jerseys, so you got to start trash talking. That's my grown, the bit. ring announcer, getting her out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're rolling on this weekend, guys. How are we all feeling about it? Have you given predictions yet? Not yet. Not we yet. were going to do that at the end, but we can do it right <laughs> now. Do it now. I'm not giving a prediction. Don't ask me for one. I'm calling the game. That'd be rude <laughs> of you guys. I'll I'll go with the over though. Whatever. I, I think I think we're going to see goals, but there's question marks about both teams' defenses. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like I don't have I don't have question marks around any particular part of the Atlanta defense. It's just more for me. How's Brad and Miles after gruesome injuries to their Achilles last year? You just want to kind of see them in a major league soccer match. Like preseason is one thing, but you want to see them at the pace of an MLS game and and know that they're back. If you know what I mean, you know, like Gutman and, and Brooks Lennon. I think Atlanta United you know, are incredibly lucky to have those two players so reliable. And then let's see what Abraham is like because uh, for me, Parata was outstanding for for half season. You know, to already be the, the highest scoring defender in Atlanta United history after a few months is pretty damn mm-hmm. cool. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what we get. I think we're going to see a lot of goals, though, because there are question marks about San Jose's defense. 5-4 Atlanta, <laughs> says D. Graham. Five. I mean, that would be a fun game. That would You're be- not going to have a voice after that. No, <laughs> you, think, you think about the, the San Jose Atlanta games over the years have all been fun. Um, yeah, so yeah. the one out in San Jose in eighteen was yeah, exceptional, was crazy. Oh, my word. Yeah, so I, I I hope it's a fun game. I, I I mean, coaches don't want to see a lot of goals conceded. There's three two from Ariel Acosta. Uh, this is such a fun show, guys. You have well done on setting setting oh, this up. This is we appreciate it. This is immaculate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hope we get some goals. I hope we have some fun. And and yeah, I'm calling it down the middle now, guys. I'm I'm uh, yeah. you know a fifty fifty broadcaster. So yeah. wherever I am the following week, that's the role. So. I'll be I'll be diving right in alongside Kindred East and Auburn. Awesome. We're super excited for you, man. Um, and I, you got a you got a family to get to. I want to respect your time. I want to get, I want to get you. No, no, appreciate get you, you to be able to go go read some stories. Um, I got really quick. Yeah, just to end on a on a little bit of a fun note. Three really quick questions. Just first thing that comes to your I'm mind. Ready. I'm All ready. Right. Uh-oh, Favorite Atlanta United goal. Oh man, I. <sighs> I just I just thought of Miggy May twentieth two thousand seventeen. Everyone always yeah. like not everyone, but people bring up the whole peach from the Paraguayan thing. Yeah. For me, it was more than that. It was my first game in Atlanta. It was the first goal of the game. It was the fact that the rain delay happened and the, yeah. the music from from the anthem singer went. And Andrew Carlton made his debut at sixteen, and it happened to be on my birthday. My brother flew in and surprised me that day with his, with his wife, and my my wife was there as well. It was like a magical magical night. So for yeah. Miguel to to to, to hammer that one home early, like sent the crowd into raptures. I mean, it was, it was yeah. a fun, fun. Were we all there? Were you guys there for that one? I was. I wasn't able to be there, unfortunately. Yeah. No. That was, that was a, that was an epic, quite epic a night. night at Bobby Dodd. Yeah, quite a night. But other than that, let me see here. Favorite Atlanta goal. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many. There's so many. a few Tito Vialba memories as well from yeah. early doors of like, like just sure pace and power. Yeah. yeah, bull in a china shop. Yeah, Still so Vialba. I'll probably go. With, I'll probably go with Miggy. I'm good with that. Um, so side note, your birthday is May 20th. Yeah, um, I'm May 21st, man. That's, that's ah, no uh, way. Uh, what year were you born? You're a lot younger than me. 1989. Oh man, you're so young. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm 85. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm the oldest one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Favorite place you've traveled? Ever for anything. Yes. Anything. All right. So favorite, I'll, I'll go favorite with end major league soccer for now, because that, okay. that's just come to mind is Vancouver to, to go to Vancouver and, and take an extra couple of days and go like gross mountain or gross mountain, go out to, to Whistler uh, Vancouver is exceptional. I love hiking. That's why I love Atlanta. I love the outdoors feel around Atlanta and the, the local hikes we have. I'm I'm up in Roswell, um, oh, yeah. and it's it's uh, it's exceptional. Favorite place? 
I love home. I love Ireland. Ireland, if you've never been to Ireland, get to Ireland. It's a friendly country. It's a beautiful country. And go down to Dingle, which is a, a small town. I know every American thinks it's a funny name. But uh, it, go down to the, uh, the, 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 it's the closest point in Ireland to America. And uh, okay. the Dingle Peninsula is beautiful. So I'll go with Vancouver on one side, Ireland. But I've, I've been to like Australia, Southeast Asia, all, all over really. And now with WWE, I'm loving discovering all the small towns and cities around this beautiful country yeah. because there's nearly an attitude sometimes that th there's nothing between New York and Los Angeles and give me uh, on my WWE travels. I've said this so many times, so many friends there, like give me a Knoxville, Tennessee or a Norfolk, Virginia over the big cities any day of the week. Yeah. I just love them. they they have their own personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. Last one, favorite place to eat in Atlanta. Cause Tommy needs somewhere to go eat this weekend. I'm, I'm flying not, in I, for the game. Oh, you are. Where do you live in Tommy? I live in Cleveland. Nice one. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I love sushi. So I feel like whenever, whenever I go out and I want to eat, I want to try and get good sushi. And we've got a great place here in Roswell called Monkey 68. Um, there's also like cl class sushi places in Woodstock, Alpharetta, mm -hmm. in, in, in um, Buckhead. Umi is, is next level. Um, pricey next level though. <laughs> so I'd probably, I'd probably go sushi but then again, if I was going for a bite somewhere, like a quick bite before the game, help me out here, guys. What am I supposed to say? Varsity? I mean, Waffle House. Varsity, I Let's think. just say I said Waffle House. Can we put that down as a, <laughs> Dude, hey. a technicality? Kevin Egan's favorite place to eat in Atlanta, Waffle House. Waffle House. We'll take okay. it. Yeah. We'll that take works. It. <laughs>